of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We see in this first week of the Great Lent, and we're reminded of how Christ, our Lord, changed for us how we looked on the law. When Moses gave the people of Israel the law, he gave it so that there could be fairness among the people. So if someone was wrong, they could go to Moses or to Aaron or at other points the judges or the priests or the king, and they could say, I was wrong. Someone took from me my things. And the law had a solution for that. Or something happened to me, something, someone did something to me that was wrong. Someone killed my cow or someone took my land. And there was an answer for that and a punishment and a resolution to all the problems. So the Lord set forth a law so that the people could govern each other. When Christ came, the law was still in effect. And it's still in effect until now. Even till now, I can't go to your house and just take, like if I like a spoon at your house, I can't just take it. If I take it and leave, and you feel very strongly about your spoon, you'll contact the authorities and say, Abuna took my spoon from my house. And the police will come and maybe I'll give it back. There is resolution to the law. When Christ came, he focused not on the resolution of the law, but how the person resolves his own law. So he says something like, if someone sues for your tunic, give him your cloak as well. So under the law, if someone sued me and said, that's my tunic, I need it back, there would be a judge that would judge between this conflict. And the person, depending on whatever the resolution was, would give the, the cloak, the tunic back. But Christ says, instead of being involved in this and fighting for your rights, the person that has been asked for their tunic, whether or not it's really theirs or the other person's, will not only give their tunic back, but give something else come in, all for the sake of peace. So that the Lord asked us to focus on ourselves instead of focusing on others, and reminded us to be harder on ourselves and easier on others. So instead of anybody, everybody going and taking ha'u, the Lord said, we're changing that. Now, you have to focus on yourself. You have a big responsibility in front of God to be perfect. And so instead of trying to take everything that's yours, instead you're giving it. So he'll say something like, if someone asks you to walk a mile, walk with him too instead. So when someone needs something from us, we don't say, I have things to do. I'm busy. I can't do that. But instead, we would say, one mile, one mile is not even enough. I'll go with you two miles. And then you see, even in the English vernacular, we make sayings out of these comments of the Lord. We'll say, he went the extra mile. Like if someone does something very good for you, you'll say, oh, this person is great. He went the extra mile. Coming from this verse, if someone asks you to walk with him one mile, go with him two. In fact, 600 years before the coming of the Lord, the prophet Jeremiah prophesied about this idea that no longer would the people be beholden to the law, but would have the law in their hearts. So 600 years before Christ, he said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I read this before. The house of Judah, Taban, is where the Lord Christ came from. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. That's the covenant of the law. Which they broke. Because 
they couldn't even follow the law properly. Though I was husband to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So let me read that again. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds, sorry, in their minds, and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. And here is the important part, for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. As you can see, when we transgress the law and we failed in instituting the law, and fulfilling the law, instead of the Lord saying, these are a bad people, they're not my people anymore, he said, I actually will just make a new covenant with them. So just like I say this to people, so like now we're in fasting, if the person is able to fast, then great. If they're not able to fast, they come and we make a plan. It's like a new covenant. We make a plan and we say, okay, so instead of maybe fasting, like this, maybe we can change it a little bit and do this. Uh, what happens is that we no longer condemn people for their failures. And the Lord didn't condemn us for our failure to not fulfill the law. But instead, he said, I will make a new covenant. And how could it be possible that he could make a new covenant? How could it be possible that this other law could be fulfilled so that the new covenant could be made? So if you make a contract with someone, if you rip up that contract after a little while and the person that has like their agreement under this contract, if they rip it up, they can't sue under that contract anymore. It's void. They can void a contract. But in order to void a contract, there has to be something given in return. So let's say like I uh, sell you fruit for $50 every month. And then you stop paying me for the fruit. And you can no longer pay me for the fruit. So I'll say, okay, we'll rip up this contract, but I'll rip it up only if you give me one more, fill, fill your payments that you made before, and then one more payment after that. And I'll rip it up and we won't have to do this anymore. So there has to be something given in return. It's called, in the law, it's called consideration. So the Lord had to do something to fulfill this prior contract, this prior covenant. Something had to be done. And in fact, something was done. If you're paying attention, you would know that what fulfilled this prior contract was the Lord's crucifixion himself. So the Lord made the law. He asked us to fulfill the law. We failed in fulfilling it. So he fulfilled it himself by his cross and shed his blood for our sake so that the prior law could be fulfilled. And after the prior law was fulfilled, we came into this new law where he would write his law in our minds and in our hearts. And what that means is that the Lord who dwells in us tells us what's right or wrong. We know. When we do anything that's difficult, we know the difference between right or wrong. So when someone comes to us at work and says, did you do this big project that I asked you to do and you haven't done it? You know that it would be wrong to say that I haven't done it. So we lie and we say, yeah, I did it. And then we hurry up and do it really quick. Or Father and son. Father says to son, did you brush your teeth? And son says, yeah, yeah, I brushed my teeth, I brushed my teeth. And then they either run and brush their teeth really quick, or they just forget about it. But the son knows that it's wrong to say, yes, I brushed my teeth when they didn't. The law is in our hearts, we know it. And the Lord taught us in these words, and you'll hear tomorrow in the liturgy, he says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven means the opposite of what it means on earth. So I go to work, and I make money, and I take some of that money and I put some of it away so that I have more and more and more. And like, and I, I accumulate funds. There's people that they say living paycheck to paycheck means like I have 
money that I bring in and I have to pay it all to like my house and my food. But some people get a little bit more and then they start putting those treasures away. And so they lay up for themselves in, on earth many treasures. They save. The Lord says, instead of doing that, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And what does that mean to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven? It means that even that we have extra, we put it away. So we no longer can pay the high price of lying, of deceit, of anger, of hate, of jealousy, of envy. Those are very expensive. If we don't do those things, we begin to lay for ourselves treasures in heaven. We take the hit now because we can't spend it here. And instead, we put those treasures in heaven and make ourselves a huge mansion in heaven instead. The wise person realizes that this law which is now in our hearts and the sin which has been forgiven gives us so much freedom now. We can do and say and be whatever we want. But the wise person takes this opportunity to lay for himself or herself treasures in heaven, meaning that I focus on what's right, not focus on what's comfortable. So I read an article the other day, it said like, you know, on average, people spend $1,000 a month on things they don't need. So they're not laying for themselves treasures on earth either, they're just spending it now. But we as Christians take the hit now, struggle a little bit now, and then save that stuff for later. Save it for the better. Save it for what's important. So when I find myself easy to lie so I can get out of an issue, I say, I'll take the hit now, and I'll lay for myself treasures in heaven. I won't lie. I'll take the hit, whatever it is. Dad saying, no, go brush your teeth right now. I'm mad at you. Or your boss saying, I told you many times to finish this project, and you still haven't finished it. And you say, it's okay, I'm sorry, I apologize, and you go and you do it. You take the hit now and save for yourself treasures later. And always then remember this, again, that the Lord is asking us to be easy on others and hard on ourselves. Always put yourself in the place where you can make the sacrifice. So instead of saying, so-and-so should have done this and so-and-so should have done that, and I feel very upset because so-and-so didn't do this or didn't do that. We say, I should have done better. I should have done more. I should have put myself out there. I should have been able to forgive. Like I said, in the middle of a fight, sometimes we say, I don't understand why this other person isn't saying sorry. The Lord says, no, no, you say sorry. You say sorry. So focus the fast. It's a nice idea in this first week to focus our fast on this idea of pushing ourselves a little bit more, being held accountable to ourselves between us and God. And when we do that, we take the hit here and we take that extra and we lay it as a treasure in heaven, something to look forward to. And when we do that also, we indicate to the Lord that we know that the treasure is real and we know that it exists and that it's important and we'll do whatever it takes to be there with him. May the Lord continue your strive in this fast in a nice and peaceful way. And may we begin to take and put more on ourselves and ease the burden of others. And glory be to God forever. Amen.